This time around, let's tackle Clipper. Next. So hey everyone, welcome back to the corner. It's me, Jeff. And this poor Troxy here, it's gone through firmware flashes galore. We've had Chichu on it, we've had Marlin on it, we've flashed back and forth countless of times over the years to do these videos. Well, this week, what we're going to do to this poor printer is we're going to do Clipper firmware, okay? So what Clipper is, it's a firmware that you require an outside computing source because it, what it does is it takes the motherboard and kind of splits up the task in between that and what we're going to use, which is a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Zero W2. Uh, this is one of the latest Raspberry Pis. It's also the cheapest too. It's about 15 bucks. And what it's going to do is it basically, it, it looks at your G-code and kind of splits it up. Whereas the motherboard uh, takes over the, uh, the stepper functions and stuff like that. And then this process is the G-code. So what it's going to do is it actually allows you to have more precise better looking and quicker prints. And what we're going to do is we're going to explore this. I'm going to walk you through it. Now, I am not a Linux guy whatsoever. I think the last time I used Linux was actually for the PlayStation 2 Linux kit, which was, well, you guys could probably look that up. It was a long time ago, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this. There is a couple of walkthroughs online. I'm going to take the one from Steve Turgeon. It's a little bit outdated, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through it step by step, kind of sort of, like I've done in my other videos. But we're going to just adjust a little bit. So I just want you guys to know ahead of time, I'm not going to explain what all the commands do. I'm basically just going to be copying and pasting the Linux commands into the menus in order to get it started. Okay. So I'm going to run the video on that. I'm going to tape all that. I'm going to show you that right now. So the first thing you want to do is download the Raspberry Pi installer. You go to other OS and Raspberry Pi Lite. Then you're going to choose your storage. You're going to hit shift control X in this menu. You're going to require to enable your SSH. You're going to put a password in for your Pi. Plus you're going to put all your Wi-Fi name and password. You're going to put your country of your Wi-Fi, and then you're going to enable writing. Now I'm on windows. It's going to ask you to insert hard disk and all this. Just ignore this. Um, as it's writing because it's actually installing a new OS onto the Pi and it tends to confuse Windows. As you can see, and it will pop up some random windows as it's finishing preparing to write. And then you'll see the OK behind once it's finalized. At least that's what it does for me on Windows. So you're just going to click continue and remove the Pi or remove the memory card and insert it into your Pi. Once you have your Pi booted up, you're going to run Putty. Now, the link for this is all down below. You're going to find the IP address for your Pi, and you're going to write it up in the text window. It's going to throw a pop-up. You're going to click Accept. Um, you're going to local name is Pi, and then you're going to put the password in that you put in the Raspberry Pi setup that you had before. Once you've done that, you should be ready to go and logged in. Now, always make sure you have a proper power supply for your Pi. Uh, if you have a trouble finding your IP address for your Pi, you can look in your router or you can get, I downloaded an app on my phone and did an IP scan and it pulled up the Pi. So once the Pi is up and running, then you're going to go to Kaios GitHub and follow the instructions, which is basically all you're going to do is you're just going to um, copy this and paste it into your putty window. And then you just right click and it will automatically paste. And once you do that, you're just going to follow the two steps. You're going to do this. It's going to download it and it's going to install it. Then go back to the GitHub page, copy the next command, go back to putty and right click and run that command as well. And this will take a little bit and then you're up and running. That's stage one done. Now in this order, you want to install Clipper, Moonraker, and Fluid. So I'm going to install Clipper now by hitting one and one. And it's going to ask you to confirm the directory. One instance and install yes. 
and now it will start installing Clipper. This will take quite a bit of time. I just cut out about 10 minutes of video and it got me to this part. So that's what you should expect. So now that Clipper is installed, we're going to install Moonraker. Again, it will ask you for a few checks of a yes or no. When to install, yes, and it will continue on the installation. And now with Moonraker done, we are finally going to install Fluid. Once Fluid's installed, that's all the software required for your Raspberry Pi. Now what we need to do is build a firmware for our printer. And we're going to do that now by going back, getting to the main menu here, and then we're going to go 4 to Advanced, and then 3 to Build Only. Once in this menu, you need to choose your microcontroller architecture as an STM32. Your processor is an STM32F103. Your bootloader you need for the Chichu V6. And your communication interface needs to be set to serial. Once you do all this, you're going to quit and save. And then that should start building your firmware. Apologies for the dead air, but I want to make sure you guys are getting everything. So you're quitting, you're saving, it's building your firmware right now. And this is what it's going to do. It's going to run through this just like when you use visual code. And it's going to build the firmware to put on the printer. So we just have one step to go after this. And that's to create the update CBD file. So you're going to back out of this and quit. So B and Q till you get to the MyMPy thing. Then you're going to paste this line of code. And that's going to create your firmware that you can now flash onto your printer. But you have to get it first. To do that, we're going to use a program called WinSCP. You can download that. And what you're going to do is you're going to type in your IP address in the window. You're going to type in pi and then your password. And that will allow you to get into the file system. And once you're in the file system, you're going to go clipper and out. Find the update file and drag it across into a folder that you're going to know. This is just going to go on my desktop. Once you have it in your computer, simply just um, place it onto a SD card. Now, literally, that's all you're going to hear is just two beeps and your fans kick on because this is a headless setup, which means that your screen will not be working. You'll have to instead use a web interface. If all goes well, you should be able to punch in your IP address, your Pi's IP address and come up with the fluid interface. Now, don't make the same mistake I did. I didn't have my serial uh, cable plugged into both the Pi and the printer, so I kept getting an error. Now, really important, you're going to have a printer config file. In order for it to find your Pi, you've got to make sure that it knows what serial port to look at. So there's a quick little command you're going to run after you uh, log into your Pi, your SSH into your Pi. And you're going to run the command, and it's going to show you your serial port. There's the command there. And then it will show you what serial port. Now, you're going to take that, and you need to Make sure it's copied precisely into your printer config file. Uh, use Notepad++ for this. Do not use WordPad or anything because it might uh, scramble it a little bit, okay? And once you install this and refresh, you should be able to get your nice fluid screen up and running. So this will be your interface for your printer. Isn't that awesome? As I'm just learning this as well, I will leave a uh, printer config file in my Dropbox for you guys to download that will have 
this in it. I'll have two actually, one for a BL touch and one regular. So with this knowledge and these files, you should be good to go. Yeah, so we got Clipper installed with the Fluid uh, interface on our laptops and our computers and stuff. Now, I'm just going to show you real quick. Um, this is the vase I was running off of when I installed the Extra Z Access. This was my tester, okay? And this was my first print off of Clipper. Now, I didn't have Clipper calibrated whatsoever, okay? I used kind of a stock file and I forget the gentleman who put it together. And I just ran that. And the extrusion was way out of the, way off and way out of the place. You can actually see right there how heavy it was and around the brim and stuff like this. That it was like, I basically had to drop my flow rate down to 40 in order just to get it to start putting the bottom level on it and making it look good. But after I got it down to about 40, as you can see, it, it's a decent print, right? So that was my first experience with clipper i'm going to be going a lot more in the clipper i'm going to be looking into this more in the future and updating that print config file um, the best i can for tronxies going forward but this should give you the tools you need in order to get clipper up and running on your machine and then it's just a matter of just like everything else when you first try it and start figuring it out it's slow but steady little changes at a time and do your research, look it up, right? Like that's what I've been doing in order to figure this stuff out. So um, yeah, uh, I think I'm really gonna like this to be honest with you. Um, I see so many really cool things about Clipper. So I'm really excited to have this on one of my machines. I might actually take it off of the poor Tronxy and move it on to my other Tronxy over here um, because that has a uh, SKR board in it. So I just might use that and go back to regular Chichu firmware on here and do some more um regular tronxy videos as well as do some clipper videos and stuff but yeah um that's kind of the plan for the future so uh if this video helped you at all please give me a thumbs up if you're cruising through the channel and found the video helpful you know uh hit subscribe please it helps the channel grow okay and until next time thanks a lot guys